Hello everybody, this is Graham Mansion, and today I'm going to be looking at Borgata. Now, the theme of this game, as you can probably tell from the front, is that each player is a crime family in the New York Mafia, with the goal of moving up the ranks to become the boss faster than your peers. You'll be fighting with other players over businesses and boroughs, with the goal of earning respect and ultimately becoming the new Don. Now, the gameplay itself is a basic deck builder, with the cards you'll be buying are things like mafioso members, weapons, and money. There's also a hefty amount of player interaction in this deck builder, as you need to be controlling businesses and boroughs to earn respect needed to move up the ranks. And of course, there's not enough space in the city for all the crime families who want to get ahead. So, was this game something you should not refuse, or should it be left to sleep with the fishes? Let's get at the table, see how it's played, then come back for my final thoughts on Borgata. So here we have Borgata set up for three players. Respect cards and money cards are placed in their respective piles on the table. All the mafiosa cards are split on their strength, as are the weapon cards. And finally, surveillance cards are in their own pile. Lay out the three businesses and randomly draw and place the number of borough cards as there are a number of players. You will take a single random mafiosa card and place it underneath each business and borough. Each player will receive a set of 15 cards depending on who's first player. These will be a combination of hood cards, thug cards, $1,000 and $3,000 cards. The exact combination of these will depend on where you are in turn order. Shuffle these cards and draw 7 as your opening hand. Each player will also receive an advancement card and a family marker card that is placed on the Kujini section of the wheel. The goal of the game is to be the first player to achieve the boss level. You'll do this by collecting respect cards and controlling burrows and on your turn taking the move up the books action. On a player's turn they will first collect any benefits from the burrows and businesses they control. And then at the start of the game, all of these are uncontrolled. Then the player can do as many actions as they want and finally draw three cards up to a maximum of 10. So let's go through the actions you can take on your turn. Racketeering is used to create income. You'll be discarding mafiosa cards from your hand to pay for the racket cost on the racketeering card and to receive the reward. Multiple racketeering actions cannot be combined. Each one must be paid for individually and the rewards are individual. You can do money laundering as an action you'll have to discard smaller money cards from your hand to receive the larger card into your hand. Plus, you have to return a $1,000 card to the supply. So, if I had four $1,000 cards in my hand, I could put three of them into my discard pile, use the fourth $1,000 to go back to supply, and take a $3,000 card into my hand. No change is ever given. For example, if I have two $3,000 cards in my hand, and I want to get a $5,000 card, I could discard the two $3,000 into my discard pile, but I'd still have to pay an extra $1,000 card back to the supply before I could take the $5,000 card into my hand. The other action you can do is buy a Mafiosa weapon or respect card. Mafiosa cards can be purchased by discarding money cards equal to or exceeding the new card's cost, and the cost is on the bottom right hand corner of all the cards. You can also return Mafiosa cards to the supply to help you pay for the new cards. You will receive their cost as credit to the card you are buying, but when used this way, the Mafia cards go back to the general supply. If you use money cards to purchase Mafiosa cards, the money goes to your discard pile. Weapons cards can only be paid for with cash. The dollar cards go to your discard pile, and the new card goes into your hand. Respect cards are usually obtained through controlling burrows, but, like weapons cards, they can be paid for with just cash. As an action, if you have any surveillance cards in your hand, and you'll get these from controlling some burrows, you can pay them off. The surveillance cards will tell you how to discard them. They are discarded to the surveillance discard pile, and not your own personal discard pile. One of the main actions you'll be doing during the game is combat. You'll be wanting to control burrows and businesses, as that's one of the requirements to win the game. All of the burrows and businesses start uncontrolled, with one face-down mafiosa card. If you wish to fight for control, as the active player, you can place up to three Mafioso cards face down on any business or borough that you want to fight for control. The player who currently controls that business or borough now gets the opportunity to stay or retreat. If they retreat, they will take their Mafioso cards from the location and put them into their discard pile. If they choose to stay and fight, and the uncontrolled locations will always do this, both players will reveal the Mafioso cards that they have at that location. Look at the total strength through each side of the cards played. Then, both players, starting with the player with the lower strength, 
can add weapon cards from their hand to their Mafiosa cards. It's a maximum of one weapon per Mafiosa cards that they have there. Then, the stronger player will have the option to play weapons cards. You'll then add up the total strength of the Mafiosa cards plus any weapon cards on both sides and determine the winner. In the case of a tie, the tie goes to the defender. The winning player will make sure their family name token is placed on the location card, and their Mafiosa cards will remain there. And the player who controls the location will only get the rewards from the bar at the start of their next turn. Any weapons cards used by the winning player will be returned to their discard pile. The losing player will return the highest strength Mafiosa card that they played to their discard pile. All the other Mafiosa cards and weapons cards go back to the main supply. The last action you can do in your turn is move up the ranks, and this is going to be the main way to win the game. Your family wheel in front of each player shows how many respect cards you must return to the supply and how many burrows you must control to move up to the next rank. You must also not have any surveillance cards in your hand to be able to take this action. You'll then rotate your family wheel one spot to your new level. If you choose to do no actions on your turn, you can recruit a goon card for free. Now remember, if you choose to recruit, you can perform no other action on your turn. And during your turn, you can discard any cards from your hand except the surveillance cards and respect cards. Once you have finished all the actions you want, you're going to draw three cards up to your hand size limit of 10. Then the play goes to the next player. The game will end when either one player has become the boss or one player controls all of the burrows. As soon as one of these things happens, the game ends immediately and that player has won the game. And that's how you play. Let's get back to see what I thought about Borgata. Theme and components. The theme being a mafia family works reasonably well. It definitely encourages you to get into character and most of the actions you do are somewhat thematic. You know, you're going to do some racketeering? Well, you need to send out some mafiosa to make sure you get paid. You need to launder some money? Well, maybe you have to pay a little to get the money back. But of course, it's not all thematic. Like, why would you only send out three people to take over a borough or a business? I understand that from a uh, gameplay point of view, it makes sense. But from a thematic point of view, eh, there's a disconnect here. And you're going to see this disconnect come up a couple of times. As for the components themselves, it's all cards. And they're not bad. The art is fine. Uh, there's nothing fancy, but it, you know, it's definitely adequate. I would have liked to see the little cost down here, maybe a little larger. It was kind of difficult to see uh, when everything is set on the table, but that's just a nitpick. The card quality is good and the cards have stood up to repeated plays. One minor quibble though is the box insert. It's custom for this game, but the card wells are not deep enough to hold all the cards, which is kind of odd. So often the top cards of each deck are kind of floating around the box and just jumping around, but that's just a minor thing. So onto the gameplay. Now this is fundamentally a deck builder where you're building your deck to try and take over different spots. Now at that level, the game works. But I did have a few problems with the game itself. So the first is just a minor one. Some of the actions you do are not intuitive if you think about the theme. Now, and also if you've played deck builders before. For example, if I want to purchase a weapon, the money goes back into your discard pile where the weapon goes into your hand. And I guess thematically it makes sense that the weapon goes into your hand, and gameplay-wise, I understand why the money goes back into your deck, but thematic-wise, the money should leave. And I'm not sure why. Same thing when you're training uh, one of the Mafiosa. The Mafiosa goes back to the supply, the money goes to your discard, but the new Mafiosa card goes to your hand. It seems kind of odd because I'm so used to having deck builders where the bot card goes into your discard pile, but I understand why they're doing this for. But it does lead to another issue, and that's deck bloat. It is difficult to get cards out of your deck. When you launder money, you give up a thousand, but basically you get a replacement bill in return, so it's a net zero there. When you buy anything with cash, your debt grows. When you do racketeering, your debt grows. Very few things allow you to trim your deck, which is a usual tactic in basic deck building games. Now you can send some of your mafioso cards to take over a borough or a business and keep them there, and any weapons that are used are discarded. But that's really about the only way to get cards out of your deck. Even when you're paying off surveillance, that money goes back to your discard pile and not to the supply, which again is a kind of a disconnect from the theme. And with those bloated decks, and the fact that your hand size can be up to 10 cards, I found that the downtime between turns lengthened greatly as the game wore on. You do all the actions you want to do on your turn before the next person takes theirs. And some people can be doing five, six, seven actions on the turn, and then later in the game you're trying to make sure that the cards in your hand are the best ones possible, so it slows down even more. And imagine playing this with four or five players and everybody before you doing five to six actions, you wait forever for your turn. 
I also found that the main idea of the game, the battling for the burrows, although interesting at the beginning, started to feel more like a waiting game. Since there's one burrow per player, it really wasn't until the last couple of rounds where people were actively attacking each other. And if you tried to take someone's burrow and failed, it was a setback. You just lost most of your probably strong mafiosa cards and all of your weapons. Plus, once the burrow has been taken over, the mafiosa cards are face up. So you know that if I put down three cards, I can probably, probably beat you. Yes, I could be bluffing, and that's completely part of the game. But at the later stages, you just need to capture one other person's burrow, and you can't afford to lose. This could be a way to thin your deck, but it seems like a very odd way to do it, as you can also just discard cards during your turn to hopefully draw you know, up to three cards at the end. But I think the biggest sin for this game is what's missing is what I enjoy most about deck builders. And that's variability. You always have the same set of cards to buy. None of them give you any extra abilities. It's just build up your hand, capture a burrow, get your respect, and move on. Repeat. Now there are major change, uh, sorry, minor changes you can make to the game. You can play with the B sides of the businesses and burrows, but they're not that different. And you can add what are called associate cards, one per business and burrow that a player can get into their deck, but it's just one card. And the ability is usually only triggered if they're on a specific business or burrow. So that wasn't overly exciting. So would I recommend this game? Unfortunately, I ended up not enjoying my plays this one. I did like the theme and thought there was a good amount of trying to tie the theme into the actions. I also like that it was very easy to learn and to teach, and he could be a good intro deck builder for people who have not played one and are interested in the theme. I like the idea of a deck builder with play interactions. You had to, at some point, if you wanted to win, attempt to take over someone else's burrow, so you had to play aggressively at some point. But I think ultimately the repetitive nature of the turns and the fact that there's no variability from game to game beyond the b sides and associates, the main cards are always the same. It means that after I played the game a few times, I was not keen to get this one back to the table. Players' turns took too long, the entire game felt too long, and every game felt identical to the last time I played. So I'm going to give this one a 5.5 out of 10. There is a working game in here, and it could be used as a way to introduce people to deck builders, but I think that's ultimately undone by the fact that it never goes beyond what feels like an intro game. And I believe most people will say, okay, that was fine, what's next? And this game doesn't have anything to offer next. But that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.